back to the Nitty Gritty. We're your hosts, Ash. And Alicia. Um, this past Sunday was a great day for Formula One fans, as it was the first race of the 2023 season and the first episode of our podcast had just dropped. Honestly, I want to say it was an interesting race, but I have some mixed feelings about it. Like, I don't know how I feel about it. There were some aspects that I thought were, like, really, like, oh, my God, plot twist. But then everything else kind of was, like, eh. Yeah. Um, so we thought we'd share our thoughts um, on this past race weekend. So uh, we wanted to comment a little bit on preseason testing because there was a little bit, like, a few. It was kind of eventful. Um, the first thing I have down is just George having his hydraulic leak with his car. And I'm like, I'm not sure if that had effects with the rest of his performance. But, like, it wasn't really a good race for him, to be honest. Yeah, honestly, I kind of am glad that the hydraulic leak happened during testing instead of during the race. I'd like, yeah. rather it happen before so you can fix it and, like, not have that affect your performance. That's kind of, like, the whole point of testing. But yeah. I didn't really watch preseason testing because I don't, like, see the point because it's not accurate. Like, we don't know what they're testing and you don't know if they're sandbagging. So I, you can't gauge how the car is because you don't know why it's performing the way it is because yeah. they could purposely be going slow to, like, test something else out. Like, they had the aero rakes and, like, flow going on. Like, we don't know why, like, they were what they were testing and why they were doing what they were doing, right? Um, something I did notice is that the Ferrari on the nose of the car had a weird <laughs> dimple on it. I had noticed during the race, but uh. people were saying it might be an accident. So that's not great T? to know. Um, and then Charles did, I think Charles did admit that they were sandbagging, but mm. not as much as people were thinking is what he said. And so unrelated to the cars, but Lewis has a double nose piercing. <gasps> I'm literally trying to get my second nostril done just because he has it. And I'm like, I think my parents would allow me if he has it because it's Lewis Hamilton. But honestly, the FIA said like, they're not like, ch- like in- investigating him anymore. Like they don't care. They, they, they've chosen to not care anymore. Like because they, found, it's, they found a hobby. They found a hobby. They don't care anymore. They're like, we have better things to do, but also it's hot. So like, what can you exactly. say? Exactly. They're like, you know what? We've accepted Lewis is hot and we're just going to go along with it. Exactly. All right. Good so now you. moving on to the race weekend was free practice. Okay. So like, to be honest, and this goes for like a lot of this episode for me, um, everything that happened this weekend to me just applies to Alonzo because like, Jesus Christ. He's so iconic this weekend. Like, <laughs> it was honestly, everything that happened with Alonzo was not the first thing I expected to get into the season. Yeah. But seeing him dominate during free practice like that just wasn't what I was expecting to see during free practice, exactly. which was great. And like, overall, I was just seeing a bit of a lag with Mercedes. But what did you have down for free I, practice? I, I was one? expecting the Red Bulls to top. But I wasn't expecting Alonzo. Like, I was not expecting any green anywhere on this. Well, it was just Alonzo because Felipe Drogovic was subbing in for Lance because Lance fractured both his wrists and was in the hospital. Okay, because I saw the whole thing with his biking accident. I had written this down. It was... So they had posted about a cycling accident, and then six days later, they posted about Felipe. And then four days after that, they were like, JK, breaking news, Lance is racing. And well, then I was confused as fuck. And I'm like, what just happened? It was like four days. I'm no doctor, but I'm like, I don't think toes heal like that quickly. So here's what he said. He said that he wasn't supposed to come back until Australia or Baku, which is round three or four. Damn. I think. And, but he, I, I don't know. I personally don't think he should have been in the car on the weekend. Because he also got in a collision. I'm like, damn. Like, what if he injured saying, himself like, even more? And then he. It's just like, what if he. He's. He, apparently, he couldn't even get into the car himself. Oh, no. The engineers are getting him out of the car. I saw pictures of it. Aww. And I was just like, what if he. What if his car was on fire like Pierre last year at um, Bahrain? How would he get out? What if he got into a collision with someone he can't get out? Like, that's so unsafe for him to be doing. I'm getting he sad still had, thinking about that. <laughs> exactly. He still had a broken toe. He, he still had wraps on both his wrists. He was in the hospital like 12 days ago, is what he said. He was in a hospital bed. And he's still, I don't know. I'm glad he was able to perform, and that's probably what he wanted to do, but I don't think it was important enough to risk his health. Yeah, because then if something had happened, then you're just delaying yourself off more races. Exactly. Well. Um, other than that, I don't think, I have anything about FP2. Um, honestly, Alonzo, Vettel walked so Alonzo could run. Yee! Like, if only Vettel had stayed one more season. The, the Aston Martin is crazy this season. Um, Max was complaining about porpoising more than usual and more than testing during um, yeah. free practice. So that's good to hear. Similarly, in free practice, too, Charles was complaining about the clutch a little bit, but they still ended up fourth on the sheet. So I'm like, that's okay. But also back in free practice one, yo, Carlos f- launching, trying not to say everyone, Carlos launching off that bump at turn nine and almost like 
literally hit, crashing into the wall. And they said something similar happened to McLaren as well. And I was like, damn, that's some speed. Like, we just started. It's free practice one. Let's all relax. <laughs> also, but, the Haas being right behind Charles in P5 in free practice two was not what I was expecting. Yeah. But you have to think about the fact that this is a free practice and not, like, it doesn't actually count for anything. But that's still pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, um, and FP3, yeah. Alonso was first again. Oh my god, yeah. King. And what, something else I noticed is that all the lap times, even during qualifying and free practice, are all really close to each other. Like they're that's what I, like one that's second. what I wrote down as well, yeah. They're only separated by like one second. Like the top 14 cars, I think, are literally separated by one second. That's yeah. actually insane. Um, And qualifying. I was like half asleep when I watched this. I like one moment I w- waking up, Q1 is starting, and then next thing you know, Q3 is happening, and I have no clue how I got there. Being a Formula One fan requires you to have such an interesting sleep schedule and um exactly. i feel like qualifier really set like an interesting tone for what we're expecting this season and like seeing the aston martin like top that and like kind of like breaking down you know the big three and like seeing someone else in there mm-hmm. as well also i remember last episode you were talking about like wanting to actually see competition and not the same people yeah. dominating and that's what i'm kind of hoping to see this season especially with everything starting out like this exactly um i'm i'm happy to see aston martin in like the top I, I was really hoping for that since last season. I'm not even, like, an Aston Martin fan. I would just love to see them up there because I, I just want something in the mix of the top yeah. three teams that are always up there. In Q1, you know, Charles has his lockup at the first corner, mm-hmm. um, which caused the red flag. And we can see yeah. the marshals, like, literally picking up, like, the Ferrari pieces off the f- He road. said he doesn't know what fell off his car because he hasn't seen the pictures. So, like, we don't even know what it was. <laughs> it was something. <laughs> something that followed. Um, and in Q2, Charles... Sorry, not Q2, Q3, my bad. Charles got out of the car a few minutes early, and I was kind of like, why? Homie sent back to the garage. I was like, you literally are P2, and you could have enough time to do one more lap to improve, but apparently they didn't want to go up for another lap because he wanted to save a set of soft tires mm. fresh for the race. Mm. So that's why they opted to um, stay in P- P3, is what they ended up being, and keep the new set of tires. Mm. Um, also... Y- Back to Q1. Yeah, but I was going to go back to Q1, too, to talk about the rookies. Logan and Lando (laughs) having the same lap time was actually insane. Like, down to the, like, down to exactly zero. Uh. Like, if Logan had set that time ahead of Lando, like, before Lando did, like, Logan would have had Lando's position instead Mm. of, you know, that's actually insane. Um, But... Lando, I mean, uh, not Lando, Nando, <laughs> Alonso, <laughs> Nando, uh, being in P5 was actually not what I was expecting. Like, that's when I realized that how fast Aston Martin is. I yeah. was like, oh my gosh. Get that's it. That's actually crazy. It's also funny because Aston Martin is um, like a Red Bull backed team, but it's a Mercedes engine. So it's like they get the best of both worlds. Mix and match in. They're, we love a good mix. Um, um, Watch Aston Martin actually be like over the budget by like a billion dollars. That's why they're so good. This <laughs> that's why they're so good this season. We're not mixing in those Red Bull aspects into Aston <laughs> Martin, and like, we don't want the Mercedes aspects of like bad porpoising and like just bad performance overall. We want to pick the things that we like, the okay? good parts of both teams, and put them together exactly. Exactly. Um, Lance qualified P eight when oh. he was literally just in the hospital. That is so impressive. <sighs> I, I watched his interview, and he said that he fractured both his arms and got surgery, and he couldn't walk, like, literally a week and a half ago. And this man still qualified. P8. Like, and ugh. the funny thing he said during the interview was, oh, yeah, all this happened, he blah, 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 broke and toe. And then he was like, the bike was fine, though. <laughs> <laughs> the bike was okay. Also, Hukenberg. That's not going to be my pronunciation. I can't properly say Hukenberg. it. Hukenberg. <laughs> I have to watch Kunta say it, and then I'll get it properly. You have to watch Daniel Ricciardo say it, actually. But Homie got P5, um, and I'm, like, my whole mentality going into the season is, like, I wonder what Gunther's saying right now, like, reacting to this. <laughs> and, like, I wonder how he feels about seeing that P5, ooh, after his first race back. First race back. So, yeah. Um, Not first Nico, race, first time back. Sorry. Nico actually qualified pretty well. He actually qualified in front of the McLaren. Nico qualified P10, and Lando was P11. Um, and... Kevin also qualified P18 right in front of Oscar in P19. Mm. So Haas out qualifying like in front of both McLarens is kind of like, if I speak like, <laughs> I don't know. McLaren's not it this season. And honestly, karma. Karma's real. Karma, karma is, is my a boyfriend. boyfriend. <laughs> karma is a god um, now. Kind of off topic, but Kevin's daughter is so cute. Did oh you my see god. the videos of I, her in the paddock? Oh my god, yeah. Literally her on the table. Oh, um, so cute. Love to see them. Bring your kids to the paddock. Have more kids and bring them to the paddock. Also, 
painful moment was Pierre qualifying P20 because his lap time got deleted. Like, does the suffering ever end for Pierre fans ever? <laughs> he left Alvatore, but here we are still in pain. Here we are still in pain. Now on to the race. Okay. Um, I don't know. I have a lot to say, but nothing to say at the same time. Agreed. I Okay, so like, okay, first thing I have down is just surprised by Lance. Love Lance. Love my Canadian king. Um, we already talked about his toe. Um, it started off pretty okay for Charles, but then I was like so wrong. I don't know why I thought things would be okay based Honestly, on how everything else yeah, went. I was like, oh, they saved the tires. Like he made up one position in the first corner. Like this is great. Um, Whenever Ferrari does a double stack, also like the anxiety and anger oh like gosh. feels in my bones. It was great, but though. it was it was good, was and like, that's all. Like this is a scam. This is a trick. This it is gave sick. me hope, and it shouldn't have given me hope. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Let, let's talk about the beginning of the race. <laughs> Lance making contact with Alonzo. Like, that is his broken toe. He should not be driving. He couldn't feel his toes. So scared. Where's the break? Um, Ocon with his, like, penalties from the FIA. The FIA was just kicking him while he was already down. I know. And it was like, I think, I don't know. That was also one of the moments I wrote down. I'm like, I wonder what Gunther's saying right now as well. Because Hugenberg also got the five second penalty. And I'm like, hmm. Yeah. Um, but Ocon got five seconds, didn't serve it properly, got yeah. another 10 seconds, and then he got another five for speeding in the pit lane. <sighs> like, this poor man was so done. I'm kind of like, he was like, honestly, there's no point. Like, I've gotten so many penalties that FIA has had it out for me. I'm just going to retire. Like, he was like, whatever. Um, because I feel you. 15 seconds is already a lot. No, it's literally like, the end of the race. It's like 20, right? 20 seconds almost. Like, 20. I think, I don't know. I can't do math. I'm an RTA media. <laughs> <laughs> the excuse for everything, yes. RTA math is all I can do. Um, um, I'm not going to lie. I smirked a bit when I saw Lando taking a little too long in the pits. Yeah. I was just kind of like, second hmm. pit stop. I, I was, was like, like hmm. listen, I don't really have anything against Lando and Oscar, but I have it out for McLaren. That's why. Like, no hard feelings to both of you, but. <laughs> um, Oscar went to the pit with gearbox issues. Oh my God. And yeah. he was in there for so long. I was like, you might as well retire him. And they did. But, um, that's kind of sucks for your debut race to have that happen. But Can, are you ready to talk about Charles? Oh my gosh, yeah. I was just like, this is so much I want to say, and mentally I wasn't prepared yet, but I think I'm ready. I felt like, you know, that emoji with like the normal smile emoji with just like the dead eyes. That's just how it felt. Cause it was kind of like, I'm not surprised and I'm used to this, but God, does it still hurt, you know? <laughs> like, gosh. Um, so here's what made me kind of like, first of all, his voice. I was like heartbroken. Oh my he was, God. Like, no power. No power. I was like, what if, like, I want to cry right now. Like, this is like, I wasn't even paying that much attention because it was like, by lap 39, we were literally back to the same top five that we started with. And I was like, I'm so sick of this. Yeah. But then that happened and I was like, this is so Ferrari of them. And especially because Charles already changed one of his energy stores. Yeah before entering this race like he's used up both of his energy stores and actually i found out this morning that the issue that caused the dnf was the energy store oh so now next well, race uh, charles has to take a penalty to replace the energy <gasps> store because it can't be restored so that is why damn and it's the way last episode i was talking so much too about how this is gonna be a great season for me and charles and then you just <laughs> tell me this now i don't understand like the issue isn't I feel like the issue isn't strategy this year. It's, like, the car isn't reliable. And, like, I heard a lot of rumors about, like, people leaving Ferrari, like, engineers leaving Ferrari after Benotto left. But, like, I didn't expect it to cause this many issues. Um, I'm so tired of this. I'm Yo. so tired of it, too. We're tired. Uh, I don't even, like, at this point, I might have to become a Red Bull fan so I'm not in pain all the time, but I can't. I'm joking. You do <laughs> I was like... The face It's you the made. way that I had to process, like, a who fan? <laughs> only, only if Daniel gets a seat there, then I'll become a Red Bull fan. Fair if you enough. kick out, if you kick out Checo and put Daniel, and then kick out Max and put Sebastian, let's go back in time. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I kind of like that. And then kick out uh, Christian? Christian and put Toto. There we go. That's my ideal go. team, but Red Bull. The Red Bull. <laughs> also, towards the end, Alonso and Carlos fighting at the end was kind of like fun to watch. Honestly, that was the only thing making like, that was the only thing interesting at was. that point. And Carlos rhyming and being like, "If I if I push to defend, I'm not going to make it to the end." He and I was like, "You spitting ball. bars? Spitting bars in the middle Rapping of like, and racing while he's under pressure? That's kind of impressive." But he did get passed by Alonso, so 
That's unfortunate. But King, good for you, Alonso. The Ferrari pain just never ends. Good for you. It's fine. And the last thing I have down for the race that we haven't mentioned was just Mercedes question mark, and that was kind of it. What was actually going on <laughs> with them? Like, I had no clue. I still don't know. Um, also, George being like, um, like, is is Lewis having, like, how's his speed or whatever? Like, he was honestly applying that he wanted to go in front of Lewis. Yeah. And I was like, bro, you just went wide and you want to go in front of Lewis? Like, I'm kind of confused. <laughs> it's fine. It's the audacity for me. So race results. Oh, well, let's see. Um, Red Bull got that double win for the start of the season. However, comma, Max also crossed the line more than 10 seconds ahead of Checo. But I kind of hope the Bahrain course takes its course. I saw a graphic of them like showing it from the past couple of reels, and I'm a believer. I think it's real. I know. I saw the whole like everything that's happened in the past years, and I believe in it. Like honestly, it's kind of crazy how ahead of everyone Max was. Like at one point he was 40 seconds ahead of Checo, and it's kind of like he, where is everyone else at? Is my question. Is everyone where are behind you? The wheel? I don't get it. And he basically he was 40 seconds ahead. He pit, and he still came out 12 seconds ahead of Checo. And like, it's kind of just like. This is why homie has champions, though. Like, yeah, sometimes Red Bull, but... It's the fact that he's such a good driver and has a good car. So, <sighs> and he's just unstoppable. He is, he is the king, Let's talk about the most important part of this race weekend, though. Alonso being on the podium. King! Absolutely. I... I kind of did expect it after seeing his performance. Yeah. But it was crazy to see. He was so happy. Like, he was he was so happy. He was joking around while he was on the radio. Like, he knew that the car was good. I'm excited to see the Drive to Survive episode of everything in the background happening for that as well. But, uh, like... The drama. It's, I, I think it's just so great to see some change in just results. But Especially also, like... because it's a, an iconic person in this It's sport. literally a long Like, though. whether you hate him or love him, like, he's done his, like... What he's not need to do in the sport. Yeah, and, he and he's still here. To be here. And he's still exactly. killing it. He's just showing I deserve to. I still deserve to be here. He's and like whoever's he's... calling me old and think I'm gonna retire. Look at this P3. Exactly. Look at this P3. <laughs> Good for um, you, King. It was an unexpected podium, and I did see some tweets, and they kind of made me giggle. And it was like this podium told me to go back to the kitchen. Oh, I saw that. Did you send this to me? I, I don't know. Okay, if I did, but it was so funny. Um, one of my favorite memes I saw, and I wrote this down, so it's like the mom holding up, you know the one in the pool where it's like the mom holding up the daughter, so that's like Alonzo, and then there's like the boy drowning in the corner, and that's Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> that's Pierre's recovery, and then the sunken skeleton at the bottom is Max Wynn, and I'm like, that's a mood. I relate to um, that. Also, Max in the cool down room, while Checo and Alonzo were speaking in Spanish, being like, what is happening? Como, como, como esta, Soy lago. <laughs> <laughs> um... And, and Checo said in a post-race interview, it was nice to see three Red Bulls on the podium. <gasps> that was so funny. Alonso was like, did he just say that? I did not see that. Yep. I was actually shocked, too. Um, mm. Lance, Lance, Lance. 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 Lance P6 with his injuries is kind of slay. But no. as we said before, I'm kind of concerned for his well-being. So am I. Um, please take care of yourself. Um, You're a Canadian king. We need you to be alive and well. Yeah. For- the Montreal Grand Prix. So we can... Shake ass get, on a yacht with you. Sa- shake <laughs> ass on a yacht and get drunkity unkity. Gasly and P9 after King. his P20. That was <laughs> such a crazy recovery. This man's insane. It was gi- it was giving what George could not do. He w- He's in his reputation era. Gasly's like, I'm out of Red Bull, my Red Bull shackles, and now it's time for me to be in my reputation era after I suffered at Red Bull. Um, and I love that for him. I love that for him. I love that for me. Um, Alex P10, our uh. dearest friend King. He had Yuki and Pierre stuck behind him. Alex is, we talked about this last episode with last season. Alex is always getting that P10, getting the points for Williams, and I love him for that. I love him. Um, and Joe did get fastest lap instead of Gasly, but he didn't get the point because he finished outside of the top 10. Mm. So that's unfortunate. Don't love that for him. Um, and that's kind of all we have to say about the race. Um, I'm looking forward to the next race, and I hope it's a little bit more interesting than this race because I was snoozing a little bit this yeah. race. Um, I also because my sleep schedule has not adjusted back to form in a long time, <laughs> so I was like, "Oh shucks, I, I forgot how this goes." See some more competition, you know? Yeah. Um, do we want to go into this episode's hot takes? Oh, our hot takes. 
My hot take, I think we're the same hot take. Yes. I'm kind of hoping for Lance domination this year. Listen, I've been I behind said this last Lance. week. I've been behind Lance for the past, like, even since last season. Like, I think he gets too much hate. Like, mm-hmm. I think he's done to pr- what he needs to do to prove himself and that he deserves to be here. Mm-hmm. Even though his dad has kind of, like, helped him get into the sport. Like, he's been a development driver since, what, like, 16, 17? Like, get he it, deserves shoddy. to be here. Use and the coin. I will defend Lance with every fiber of my being for the rest of my life. If... He has 100 fans. I'm one of them. If he has zero fans, I'm dead. <laughs> like, I am dead. I am one of his biggest fans. Oh, she died shaking her ass on a yacht is what <laughs> happened. Um, mine was literally the exact same thing. So it's not really a hot take, but I just want to see more podiums for Aston Martin. I want Green's my favorite color. I want to see more green. And once again, I just want to see more competition. I want to see something exactly. on the podium that's not black, navy blue, or red. I want to see... More, I want to see that diversity. Honestly, you know, the green to Aston Martin is, is kind of iconic. I yeah. love the color. It's my favorite color. Um, and for next episode, I'm very excited as Ash and I definitely have a heck ton of things to talk mm-hmm. about. Stay tuned for a drive to survive. Re- re- <laughs> Stay tuned for a drive to survive review next episode. Thank um, you so much for listening or watching, or however you choose to stream this. We will see you next week when we get into the nitty gritty. Bye.